I've got a ton of accessories in this video for a whole range of budgets, but which accessories do you actually need and why do you need them? Let's take a look. If you're gonna be filming all day, then you want to get yourself a spare battery. This should be one of your first purchases along with a battery charger. You can charge the battery in the camera, but for more convenience, you want to use a battery charger. With this fast charger, you can charge up to three batteries at any one time and you can charge your batteries while you carry on filming. There's nothing worse than running out of battery when you're filming, so these two are a must have. As a backup or as an alternative to an extra battery and a charger, I always recommend getting a power bank. And this one is from Anker and it's 10,000 milliamp hours, so it will charge your camera several times. You can top your camera up in between shots or while you're on a break and for those extra time lapse shots you can plug this directly into your camera and your camera will run for hours. One of the other very first accessories that you need to get is a selfie stick. This will allow you to get those really cool shots where it appears like the camera is floating in front of you, behind you or above you. And there are so many selfie sticks to choose from it can be really overwhelming. The most pocket and budget friendly ones though are these ones from Insta360. And they will cover you for most shots that you want to get. They're fairly pocket friendly and they operate on a friction design so you can just pull them out. And this one extends to 114 centimeters. If you want to get a selfie stick that's more robust and at the more professional end of the market, then you might want to consider getting a monopod. These two monopods are from Bushman Panoramic and a quick shout out to them because they kindly sponsored this video. Both of these monopods are aimed at the higher end of the market. You've got the version two, which comes with a tripod and a counterweight and the selfie stick separately extends to more than 150 centimeters. And you also have the pro version, which has a bigger counterweight and a much longer, bigger tripod. And both of these features give you a lot more stability. And there are also some extra features like these additional quarter inch threads on the handle of the selfie stick and these angled legs, which allow you to add a magnetic mount to the base. And the counterweight itself also has a number of quarter inch threads in various different positions, which gives you a lot more flexibility for mounting and both of these monopods extend to above head height so they're perfect for virtual tours. For a super long extended selfie stick to get even more creative with your shots you can get something like this from Insta360. Now this starts at 36 centimeters but extends to a massive three meters. I can't even swing this around properly to show you but you get the point. And all this is friction controlled so you can literally just pull it in and out to whatever length you want and this allows you to get those no drone, no problem shots really easily. The internal audio with most cameras this size isn't that great and with the X3 it's no exception. So to get better audio, you're gonna to want to use an external mic. I've always used the Rode Wireless Go just because it's so simple to use. It's pretty much plug and play out the box with very few buttons on there. It gives you really great audio and I've tested this at long distances and in amongst the trees and it performs really well in some of those extreme tests. To use this mic with the X3, you'll need a mic adapter which plugs into the USB-C socket. You simply pull off the USB door and then plug the mic adapter straight in onto the side and it gives you a nice secure fit. You'll also need a mic bracket and this one from Ulanzi fits underneath the camera in between the camera and the selfie stick. You then clip the Rode mic here onto the side and then you plug the cable into the side of the adapter. And then this stays invisible in your shots because the mic and the adapter and the cable are all hidden in the camera's stitch line. For shooting action, I have several mounts that I recommend for the X3. For biking and e-scooters, I use this PGY Tech handlebar mount. And this clamps onto your handlebars, but it also comes with a reducer if you want to put it on a smaller tubular part of your bike. But the really cool thing with this mount is that it's got an integrated arm, which you unlock here, and this takes the camera further away from your bike. And if you're shooting single camera, this mini magic arm gives you a lot more flexibility for positioning your camera at various different angles on your bike. For car shots, I love using Bushman's Popeye mount. Now this is a magnetic mount with a pulling force of up to 45 kilos. You simply put this on your car and you can mount your camera directly to it, or you can add a selfie stick and then stick a camera on the end. So then you've got this on your car and because you've got that much more distance between the camera and your car, you get those really cool cinematic floating camera style shots. 
I love discovering new gadgets and this one is by PGY Tech and it's the Mantis Pod 2.0. I didn't ever use the Mantis Pod 1.0 so I can't tell you how this differs but all I do know is that this is really cool. This is three camera accessories in one, it's a hand grip, it's also a tripod and it's a hanging camera clamp mount. This thing is really solid and it's got a movable head, you just push this button in here and then the head moves to various different angles and then clicks into place. And when you open it, it becomes a super wide tripod. So the legs just open from the back here. And look, look how wide those legs are. So this is gonna give you a lot of stability. And again, even in this position, you can position the head to whatever angle that you want it. And if you press this button here, it goes even lower still. So we push this, straighten this head up here, Look, look at this. This is super low. That is gonna be so stable. So we can add a selfie stick to this tripod and then you've got a real stable base. And if that wasn't enough, you can also flick this bit down here and now it becomes a hanging mount. So you could hang this onto a monitor or onto a wall. That's pretty cool. And this mount is particularly good if you're using it in single lens mode because you have got that flexibility of your camera position. If you're switching your camera a lot between different mounts, then you might want to consider the Bushman quick release. You simply pull down this metal sleeve and then the camera releases from the mount. So if you bought more than one of these, you could take it off of your selfie stick and then put it straight onto a tripod. And as you'd expect, the quick release gets hidden in the stitch line of the camera, so it's perfect for your 360 shots. Your X3 is waterproof down to 10 meters, but for extra peace of mind, or if you want to go underwater even further, then I'd recommend getting the dive case. The dive case gives you better stitching and obviously better protection underwater. The only disadvantage with using this case is that the base here, which is the nadir, can still be seen in your shots. So it's just something to consider when you're shooting in 360, although you can reframe away from the base of the camera as a solution. I use my X3 on a water slide at a theme park and although you don't need the dive case for shots like that, you do need to make sure that when you put the battery in and you close the USB door, that no yellow is seen because if you can see any yellow on these tabs, then the X3 isn't waterproof. And for these water slide shots and for all the roller coaster shots, I use this chest mount. This is the original GoPro chest mount, but Insta360 have got their own version and you can also pick up a lot cheaper third party version as well. This doesn't give you a particularly good shot of your face or the person sat next to you, but it does give you a brilliant POV shot. And in the UK, these are the only type of mounts that you're allowed to use on a roller coaster. The Bullet Time Cord is a great fun pocket friendly mount that allows you to get those really cool bullet time shots. It's really easy to use. You simply screw this into the base of the camera. You then select bullet time in the menu and then you literally just pull this out and swing it around your head. These 360 cameras, because of the big lenses either side, are really vulnerable and there's a lot you can do to protect them. Starting with the lenses, I'd highly recommend getting a lens hood. The X3 does come with a pouch, but I personally think that the lens hood is much more convenient for taking on and off. And plus, when you've got the lens hood on, you can still access all of the buttons and more importantly, the menu system. So you can make changes to the camera, you can review your footage, and you've still protected the lenses. Now this next one is a real simple one, and that's a lens cloth. Now this is essential, and these ones from Spuds, and also Chums do one that's very similar, they come in a little pouch, so the lens cloth itself is sewn into the bag, and then you can clip this onto your camera bag, or you can clip it onto your belt. Clean lenses mean better images, so always keep your lenses clean. I never use lens guards with my X3. I'm just super careful with it, and I don't really shoot in situations where it's vulnerable. However, a lot of you have asked me about lens guards, and although I haven't tested these, I wanted you to see that they are available. So you obviously get two lens guards in the box, one for each lens, and then you get three pairs of stickers. So you peel these stickers off, and then you stick the lens guard over the top of your lens. These do feel fairly solid, but they are only made of plastic, so will scratch up easily, 
and in certain conditions these will show up the stitch line more prominently in your shot and you will see occasional glare as well. And of course the biggest disadvantage is that you can't easily take these on and off. They're a one-time use. You either put them on and leave them on or you put them on, take them off and just accept that you are wasting that sticker so you've kind of got three main uses with them. But if you're shooting action stuff all the time you could just leave this on and for you it might be a good investment to give you that extra peace of mind. When you're out and about filming, you want to get a wearable bag to put your camera in and your accessories. I found this one earlier this year from TomTok and I absolutely love it. You wear it over your shoulder and it's a sling bag so you can swing it behind you when not in use and then when you want to get your camera or an accessory, you just swing it around, you get your camera out and then you just swing it back again. And the really great thing is that there's a ton of room in here with several pockets and loads of compartments. Some of the time though when you're out shooting you want a bigger bag particularly if you've got more than one camera or a lot of accessories or you've got a DSLR camera that you want to take with you and for that Best360 have designed a bag for when you're out and about filming with your 360 camera and it's got a ton of room for a lot of your accessories and cameras. At first glance this looks like an ordinary bag but it's not until you look inside the bag that you realise how well designed it is. If you open the bag up, you've got several smaller pockets that are all zipped so you can put in different cameras and different accessories. And this is usually the problem with bigger bags like this is that you've got this big cavernous space and you just lose all your stuff at the bottom of the bag. But these smaller pockets help keep all your gear much more organised. And it also comes with these straps on the side so you can put your selfie stick in this side pocket, extend your selfie stick and you can get those really high angle drone style walking shots. To speed up your workflow, you can buy the Quick Reader. The Quick Reader allows you to take your SD card out of the camera and put it in the Quick Reader, and then when you record, it records directly to the SD card in the Quick Reader. To transfer your footage, you then take the Quick Reader and you plug it straight into your phone and transfer the files straight into the app. And this avoids using Wi-Fi, so saves your battery and your time. And for memory cards, I only ever use SanDisk because I find them to be the most reliable. And I usually use SanDisk Extreme Pro cards. And I try to use a 64 gigabyte or a 1 to 8 gigabyte card because I think this always reduces the risk of losing too much footage. If something happens to the card, you lose it or it gets corrupted. Now you know what accessories to get for your X3, you'll want to know what type of shots to get. So you'll want to watch these videos next. My name's Rich, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.